Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. We're just waiting for a few more people to join us. Thanks for joining the webinar on winning motion M86 for a National Citizens Assembly on Electoral Reform. It's great to see so many people joining already. We've had a great response to this webinar, and I'm really excited about all the work that folks have been doing across the country uh, to help build momentum for this motion and MP support. So in the chat, there's two things you can use here in this webinar. There's the chat and the Q&A. So the chat is for you to talk to each other. You can say hi, where you're from, uh, that kind of thing. If somebody says something you like, thumbs up, that, you know, chat with each other. Uh, if you have questions for the panelists, those you put in the Q&A. So after, uh, after we get through a short presentation by me and a talk by each of the MPs, then I'm going to be looking at the chat box and I'll pick out a few questions to ask the MPs. Because we have a short time in this webinar, we might get to three or four questions, so we're not going to get to everybody's question. Um, I'm going to try to pick out the most relevant ones and then I can always work with uh, my guests to answer the other ones uh, by email after the webinar. So great to see such a uh, good turnout for this. We have about 350 people who have signed on already. Welcome everyone. I'm just going to give it about one more minute and then we will get started on the content because we only have a short time. And Julie has to leave at uh, 145 today. So just to let everybody know when she disappears, uh, it's because she has another meeting that she has to go to, but we are definitely going to hear from Julie. The folks are still coming in. Okay. All right, I'm just going to get my screen up so I am ready to go. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're going to get started, even though there's people still joining us just because of the time limits that we have today. So welcome everyone to the webinar on winning motion M86 for a National Citizens Assembly on electoral reform. Um, I'm just reminding everybody that you can talk to each other in the question in the sorry in the chat box and you can put questions to the panelists in the Q&A. And in the chat box, we have Gisela from Fair Vote Canada who will be able to provide you with any resources and just generally help in the chat. So if anybody here doesn't know me um, or Fair Vote Canada, we are a national citizens campaign for proportional representation. We've been around for about 20 years and we are uh, powered almost entirely by really passionate volunteers across the country. So today's format is that each of the, I'm going to do a short presentation to get anybody up to speed who is uh, new and to just introduce where we're at in the campaign. We are going to hear from each of the three MPs we have today, which is Lisa Marie Barron, Julie Zirkowicz, and I hope I said that right because I did a little practice, <laughs> and uh, Ed Green Party MP, Mike Morris. Uh, and then we'll have a Q&A and we will be wrapping up at two o'clock. So I'd like to start today with uh, a Fair Vote Canada land acknowledgement. So for myself, I am in Kitchener, Ontario, which is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral people. And this is for all of Fair Vote Canada that I, this land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations and communities across Canada. These lands have been inhabited by Indigenous people since time immemorial and continue to be home to vibrant cultures, languages, and traditions. We recognize and honor the diverse and distinct Indigenous people, including First Nation, Inuit, and Métis, who have stewarded these lands for countless generations. We express our deep respect for their contributions, resilience, and ongoing presence. We recognize that land acknowledgements alone are not enough. We must actively engage in decolonization, support Indigenous self-determination, and work towards restoring Indigenous rights, sovereignty, and land stewardship. So again, thank you all for joining me today. I think I forgot to say that I'm Anita. I'm the ED of Fair Vote Canada. So I'm going to do a short presentation now. If I can find the right screen to share. Okay. If I can move all these little bars around. Okay. All right. Can people see my slideshow? Okay, good. 
just so Julie's nodding. So that's reassuring. I've had unpleasant experiences talking for a long time and only I can see it. So I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little overview uh, for anybody that's new and to bring everybody up to speed with our campaign. So this is a campaign to win the motion M86, which is for a citizens assembly on electoral reform. What you're looking at here is the uh, motion sponsor on the left who's joining us today. That's MP Lisa Marie Barron. And these are the MPs that seconded the motion. And you can have a maximum of 20 joint seconders. And we were, um, thank you. I was just going to say lucky, but it's not luck. It's actually thanks to the work of so many people, including a lot of you that are here today, that we got those 20 joint seconders. So a citizens assembly on electoral reform is something we've been pushing for, oh, about five years now. Um, and we've done a ton of things over the last five years. And this year, we're finally starting to see some of our work paid off. Uh, but what I'm just showing you now is that we've been, uh, to, thanks to generous donations, fundraisers, you know, we've run three national polls and showing that this continues to be a really popular idea among Canadians uh, who support all different political parties. So in the most recent poll in December 2022 by ECOS, again, you can see that when people have just given a short explanation of about what this a citizens assembly and electoral reform would be, they really like this idea, and that includes people that support all kinds of electoral reform. They like the idea of citizens, um, you know, taking time, looking at the evidence and making an informed recommendation. So this started early, uh, well, last year, actually, a year, year, year and a half ago, we started working with MP Mike Morris on his private member's motion M76, which was basically for the same thing. And that's when volunteers started going out and talking to MPs about seconding this motion. Unfortunately, Mike's motion wasn't going to come to a vote in the House of Commons because he's not high up enough up on the order of precedence. So we worked on that uh, all last year and last winter. And at the same time, we were working on a campaign related to a vote at the Federal Liberal Party Convention. So these two coincided, which was really great because then people could talk to their MPs about both. And that is uh, our national chapter. President Rael Laverne at the Liberal Party Convention talking about the resolution that passed for a National Citizens Assembly on Electoral Reform. So when you're talking to your Liberal MP, it's actually official party policy supported by Liberal Party members um, to do something like this to look at electoral reform. And it finished as number 11 out of 24 policies that are now policies for the next eight years. So in June, Lisa Marie uh, approached me to say that she was willing to put forward a private member's motion for and that's what we're here today for and her motion M86 will be coming to a vote in the House of Commons. So we're really, really grateful to Lisa Marie for taking her spot um, that could have gone on any number of issues. You know, it's sort of a, a precious thing when you have a spot on the list that your motion for something is actually going to be debated in the House of Commons and she chose to use it on this. So we're really, really happy with this opportunity. So what do we need to win? Well, I mean, I put a number here, but it's not exactly that number, but the gist of it is we need a majority of MPs to vote for this. There's no shortcut uh, there. So it's it's an ambitious goal. It's not easy. Those of you who know have been here for years know how difficult this is. And if we didn't think that we could win this, we wouldn't be putting the uh, crazy amount of effort that we've been putting in the last six, seven months to win this motion. So we need to convince a lot of MPs. And where are we at? Now, this is about, this might be a little bit outdated now. I think we've got a few more since then. But generally, you know, the Greens are going to vote for it. The, all the NDP are going to vote for it. Oh, I see I've used the French version of NDP. Oh, well. Uh, Liberals, we maybe have 25 or 30 that have committed that they're going to vote for it. I can assume we're going to get the vote of the Conservative MP who seconded this motion. And I know of at least four more that are leaning towards yes, but they don't know yet what the party position will be and what kind of message they're going to get from the party about if it's okay to vote for that. And we were delighted uh, that to know that the Bloc Québécois caucus is also going to vote for it. So. In terms of convincing MPs, we don't need NDPs and Greens. We need to focus on Liberals and Conservatives, and that's what our campaign is all about. 
In terms of the timeline for this motion, uh, it started in June when the motion was introduced. The first debate was in November, and we don't have a date yet for the vote, but we expect it will be in February after they come back, the MPs come back from their holiday. So as soon as I have a date, I'll let you know. We don't know. But anyway, point is we have uh, a few weeks to get the votes that we need. So we started back last June. Well, we started back a year ago, but anyway, uh, doing MP visits, we've been doing conservative MP visits. And when I say we, I mean constituents making appointments, meeting with their MPs. Sometimes it could take months and months to get an appointment with your MP. Um, not with the ones on this webinar, but with many of the other ones, it takes, you know, five, 10 calls, 10 emails and three, four months to get. And that's why we started really early. So we've been doing those MP visits and we still have a few more coming up in January. And here's some of our folks meeting with our uh, the Liberal MP in the Yukon. And with Alex Ruff, uh, the Conservative MP in Bruce Gray Owen Sound. And in November, we also had a reception that was co-hosted by Julie and Lisa Marie and Mike uh, talking about um, M86 and just giving MPs some more information about that. Then we moved on to some petitions and canvassing. So once we had met with as many MPs as we are probably realistically going to meet with, given the volunteers that we had, we moved on to asking people to collect paper petitions, not online paper, because it takes work to collect paper and you have to have face-to-face -face conversations uh, with people in the community. So we asked people to start collecting petitions, asking MPs to vote for Motion M86. Again, this is in ridings with Liberal and Conservative MPs that need a push, not not Julie or Mike or, or Lisa Marie, other writings. Um, so, and a lot of them have been out doing canvassing in the community. Uh, there we are in Hamilton and Chad Collins writing and in Parkdale High Park. And we've been tagging MPs on Twitter, uh, letting them know that's really, really important when you're out doing something where you're knocking on doors and doing th talking to voters in ridings that aren't just the usual suspects. You want to be tagging your MP so that they know that you're out there doing that. So we're on the final stage of our campaign for motion M86, and that will be phone banking. So that's something I haven't talked about before. I'm introducing it today. You'll be getting a sign up email. If you're on the Fairwell Candle list, look in your promotions box, look in your spam box, watch for that email. And after you leave the webinar today, you'll be redirected to a sign up page. So I would like everybody who's willing to sign up to do phone banking. Here's how it's going to work. We're calling our own supporters. So before you think, oh, I couldn't call cold call somebody with a telephone book. It's not like that. We're calling our own supporters. These are friendly calls. We're calling uh, people in writings that support Fairville Canada and they have an MP that maybe needs a little bit more encouragement, asking that person to call their own MP about supporting motion M86. And so this is what you'll get the email asking you to sign up. Okay, and we're, who are we calling? Again, we will be calling ridings with MPs we know are undecided. So maybe a group of constituents has met with the MP uh, sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times, <laughs> sometimes for years. Uh, and we know they're on the fence. They're they're considering it. Okay, so these are top target ridings. Uh, we're calling into ridings where we can boost local efforts, where there's uh, uh, volunteers out doing canvassing, petitioning, they're doing something to get the attention of their MP. We'll be calling some writings with ministers that we know um, in past, maybe before they were a minister, were receptive to this idea and really liked it. So we'll be calling those because we want that message to get through to the government. And finally, if we have enough volunteers, we'll be calling every writing we can where we just don't know anything about the MP or what they think. We have thousands of phone numbers. And if we get enough volunteers, we can really make a big difference. So just to sum up, we are in a unique political moment. I probably don't need to tell those of you on this webinar who have been with this uh, cause of electoral reform for years and decades that these opportunities are rare. I mean, we, this, the last vote we had in the House of Commons related to electoral reform was seven years ago, and two Liberals voted for it. So here we are, we have a chance to make a difference. These chances don't come along very often. So if you can spend a few hours to help us, your efforts uh, to help us win this vote are really, really important. So now I'm going to turn this over to 
Let's share. How do I stop share? There it is. Okay. I'm going to turn this over to our guests now who are going to tell you a little bit about themselves, why they support this motion. I'm going to start with the sponsor of this motion, Lisa Marie Barron. If I can find the Lisa Marie Barron biography here. So I've got the I've got the very short version. Uh, Lisa Marie and Julie and Mike, I didn't write down the whole thing just because for the sake of time. So okay. Uh, so Lisa Marie Barron, she's the it looks like I've got part of this. She is the MP for Nanaimo Ladysmith. She is the NDP critic for fisheries, oceans, and the Canadian Coast Guard. She is the deputy critic for mental health and addictions. Lisa Marie sponsored M86 because she believes in electoral reform to strengthen Canada's democracy and ensure representation that matches our communities. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa Marie. Thank you so much, Anita, and I feel like that's a good summary of who I am. Um, first of all, I just want to say a huge happy new year what a great way for us to be starting off a new year i'm watching the numbers of participants continuing to rise 456 right now um just incredible um i am currently on the traditional territories of the coast salish people specifically the nanaymuk first nations uh as julie mentioned as i'm the member parliament for nanaimo ladysmith which uh, rides along the east coast of vancouver island in british columbia and, um, you know, when I was thinking about the, the most important things for me to share today, um, the very first thing I want to uh, acknowledge is the incredible work of all of those who have been volunteering um, through Fair Vote Canada. I am getting tagged on posts. I'm getting, um, you know, seeing pictures online. I'm seeing people out knocking on doors, making phone calls, sending emails, sending letters. It has been just incredible to be surrounded by such an incredible group of, of passionate uh, volunteers. I want to set my timer so I don't go too long. Um, uh, such a passionate group of volunteers. Um, you know, and I want to reiterate that it's working. The work that so many volunteers are doing, it is clear, you know, members of parliament that I have spoken to about this motion um, before who were mm, a little apathetic to the idea, if I can be frank, have come up to me later and said, you know what, I need to loop back to you and talk to you about that motion that you brought up to me. And the reason is, is because volunteers are reaching out to them. Volunteers, their constituents are talking to them about the importance. Um, absolutely, I'm continuing to have those conversations as well, but the real weight behind um, this motion and and getting people to pay attention to it it comes from you because ultimately we're in the positions to represent constituents and if constituents don't care about this work mps aren't paying attention and so to to the to the importance of this so please keep um keep on that incredible work because i am seeing the momentum building and quite frankly i'm i'm optimistic i'm really optimistic um that this is a there's a real possibility of this passing in the house i also want to acknowledge the incredible work of of champions like mike morris uh julie zerowich um, and of course, my colleague uh, Daniel Blakey from the NDP, who's also not here now, they have been champions of, of electoral reform and have been working side by side, getting the word out, talking to members of parliament um, and making sure that this is not something that I'm, I'm on my own with because it takes a community to get important change done. And it's clear there's an incredible community of support uh, working on this. So just a bit of background, um, I got elected in 2021 and um, um, ran in the federal election, quite frankly, after living um, most of my life in, in low income um, and low income situations. I'm a single parent with two children. Um, and that's not the case for many members of parliament. If I can be frank, there's a lot of privilege uh, in those who are elected as members of parliament. And I noticed you know, from the outside before I decided to run during the election process itself. And then when getting elected, it was very evident um, seeing the barriers in people being able to run, seeing the, the challenges in being able to have that strong representation in parliament, seeing the way in which the systems that are in place often are the barrier to get um, vital legislation put forward. And so 
you know, when I got elected, my first time ever stepping foot in Ottawa was as an elected member of parliament. And I remember the awe of walking around and, and looking at all the history in these buildings. And it was shocking to me to see that, you know, rules were made in 1867, is it, with Confederation. And somebody said, yeah, that works. We'll keep it that way. Because there's still, you know, it, it's outdated. The, the, the way in which we're passing parliament, you know, there's a lot of good people doing good work. And the system systems are, are, are problematic to be able to get work done at the pace that we require. Um, and, and, you know, as somebody who has a community development background, a sociology background, somebody who's understood um, the barriers in the systems and being able to get forward as, as somebody who's lived in, in low income, um, it was evident to me that we needed to change the systems that we're in. And so when I had the, the uh, privilege of bringing forward a um, a motion or a bill for debate, I had, of course, a, a real hard time trying to identify which one is the best. And I was thinking about all the work that I'm doing around ocean protection, around anti-poverty, around affordability, around housing. There's endless items that I could bring forward. But ultimately, I've become very aware in my short time, I'll recognize of being a member of parliament, that if we keep going the way that we're going, we're going to keep going in these same vicious cycles, seeing the barriers, seeing things being delayed, seeing the lack of follow through on vital legislation, you know, at a time when we're in a climate crisis, at a time when people are struggling to make ends meet, when there's um, you know, violence and, and war happening internationally. Now is the time more than ever when we really need to be paying attention to the systems that we're in. We need to be paying attention to how do we strengthen our democracy? How do we increase collaborations? How do we increase, increase representation? Because if we don't have the voices that match our communities at the table in parliament, we're missing really vital information. Often people can be well-intentioned and wanting to put forward legislation, but without the, the real lived experiences of, of those in our communities, we're always going to be missing something. We need to be seeing increased representation. And so I'm, I'm really passionate about us changing the systems that we're in. And I'm so, so happy to be surrounded by like-minded people who are recognizing this. And, you know, I will tell you, people say, well, why didn't you put forward um, your bill on uh, the increasing amount of derelict vessels? Um, oh my gosh, I'm almost at time now already. That's how quick it is. And absolutely, I'll keep doing that work. But this is the bill that will allow us to move forward together and see increased collaborations. I apparently could go on for hours about all this, so I'm just going to find my very last point to say I'm thankful for all the work that you're doing, uh, Anita at Fair Vote, all the volunteers, the board members, um, and all the MPs who are paying attention and um, coming together to do this important work. This is a nonpartisan issue. It impacts us all, and the system that we're in is very partisan, so we need to make sure we have all um, members of parliament from all parties on board and and i am seeing a move in that direction because of your work um, i want to share that this work is giving me optimism for for the future for you know today and also for future generations for my children's children and it's it's necessary work it's important work and uh, i'm grateful to be here today so thank you everyone for for coming to share in this important discussion Thank you, Lisa Marie. Really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to move on to Mike. Uh, so Mike was first elected as MP for Kitchener Center in 2021. Uh, since being elected, Mike has spoken out continuously for electoral reform in the local media and social media. In 2023, sponsored Motion M76 for a National Citizens Assembly. And I'm going to just leave it short, Mike, so that you can spend some time talking about this issue. Uh, premièrement, merci Anita. C'est un grand plaisir d'être ici avec uh, vous tous. Uh, J'ai vu il y a des, des francophones qui sont ici avec nous, alors je veux dire que uh, le reste de mes commentaires sera en anglais, mais s'il y a les questions en français, ça sera un plaisir de répondre à vous tous et tout uh, en français. Um, again, really, really a uh, joy to be with you all uh, this afternoon. Huge kudos to Fair Vote Canada. This is my first kind of more formal engagement after the holidays. It's really a testament to Anita and her team for pulling us all together so quickly, recognizing that the timing of this conversation is not a coincidence. It's very much in lead up to the vote uh, in early February, possibly as early as February 7th. 
And it's so great to be here. Earth fifth, second hour of debate, I believe, on the fifth, Lisa Marie, potentially the vote on the seventh. Either way, it'll be in early Feb. Uh, and it's so it's so great that we're chatting. What are we, January uh, 7th still? So we got a full month here where we're not just talking amongst ourselves, but organizing to win the votes that are necessary to win Motion 86. Uh, so thank you again to Anita and all the volunteers at Fair Vote Canada that made this conversation possible. Thank you to Lisa Marie, who took, you know, it is a special pri privilege to get uh, a good number in the order of precedence. Lisa Marie not only chose or, or was chosen with a great number, but then chose electoral reform as uh, what she is going to bring forward for a vote. And so it's really thanks to Lisa Marie that we have this really special opportunity for the first time ever. Uh, a, a, a National Citizens Assembly is being debated in our House of Commons and every MP will be voting on it in early February. Um, and so with my remaining time, I think what I wanted to just share with you all is that we recognize that this is not going to be easy. We, if you look at other private members' motions and bills that have passed so far in the House of Commons, in every case, at least one of the two major parties have their party's support behind it in advance of that vote. And then other parties like Greens, the NDP and, and the Bloc may also support it to get it through. In this case, we don't have that. What we do have, though, is a vast majority of Canadians who want to see this motion moved ahead with, and in fact, the grassroots of a plurality of the political parties with MPs in the House of Commons have also supported it. And so what we have is people power across the country, what it's going to take to win this, because I know that's one of the questions I'm seeing already in the chat. I'll close with this. There's really two pathways to win. And winning this is so critical because we've seen that time and again, politics has gotten in the way. And I think what Fairville Canada has done really well here and what Lisa Marie has brought in tenor and tone is to keep it nonpartisan, to recognize this is in the best interest of Canadians to move ahead with, that actually my perspective doesn't matter. What matters is getting regular people together, getting experts, informing them to get recommendations back to our House of Commons, to breathe life into a conversation that we know is so critical to improve our, our democracy. And so through this motion, we can keep the politics out of it. Uh, we know that politics has gotten in the way time and again. Well, let's have regular folks get expert recommendations and move ahead with that. So then back to my point of how do we win this? Well, there's two ways. The one way that we are in the midst of right now is one vote at a time. We need 170 votes. And I can tell you in my last two weeks in Ottawa before the holidays, almost every day I was speaking with another MP who told me that their vote had flipped. And it wasn't because of my conversation with them. I can have 20 conversations with an MP, I'm still not their constituent. What is flipping votes is your meetings, your conversations, your emails, and the specificity, not just emailing to say, I believe electoral reform is a good thing, but that there's a motion. I expect you to vote for it. I want to have a meeting with you. I'm just, The fact that y'all are going door to door, knocking on doors to get petitions signed, the phone uh, banking that's being done to Lisa Marie's point, that's what gives me hope. One at a time, we need to get 170 votes. And we can be working with MPs from all parties, but in particular, liberal and conservative MPs that have yet to indicate their full support. The other option is that through all of your efforts, we could see the larger two parties change their party position. That is also possible. Should that be the case, of course, that's another pathway to win. So there's multiple pathways to winning this, but ultimately the, um, the process to get there is the same, and that is, even if your MP is supporting, considering friends of yours that are in nearby ridings and organizing with them and encouraging them to seek out their MP, to have that conversation with them, to let them know that you expect them to support this because that's when our democracy is at its best is when people are having their voices heard. I'll pause there. Thank you again for making this happen, uh, Anita, and uh, to you all for, for being here. Thanks for that, Mike, appreciate that. 
Okay, I'm going to introduce Julie now. Uh, so Julie, thank you for joining us again, everyone. Julie has to leave a bit early, so we're going to hear from her. She might have help with answering one question, and then she has to leave at 145. So Julie Zerkowicz was first elected in 2015 and re-elected in 2019 and 2021. She serves on the House of Commons Parliamentary Finance Committee and is chair of the Canada NATO Parliamentary Association. Julie strongly believes that every Canadian should have equal access to opportunity. During the 43rd Parliament, Julie was proud to have introduced the first guaranteed basic income bill. I'm mentioning that just to sort of, it's a theme, equality is sort of a, a theme here with Julie, um, which was built C-273, an act to establish a national strategy for guaranteed basic income. Julie has seconded motion M-86 and co-sponsored the reception in November for MPs to learn about the motion. And I also just want to say, you know, for years of um, working with volunteers in Julie's riding, going back seven, eight years, every time they want to have a meeting with Julie, he has a meeting with them. And I can't tell you how rare that is, and like in a timely manner. And she's always been really supportive of electoral reform and constituent efforts in her writing on this. So I will turn this over to Julie. Well, well thank you so much, Nita. Thank you for mentioning guaranteed basic income. It was a very important bill, not only for the residents of my writing of Davenport, but also for, I think, many Canadians who are very supportive of a new foundation for our social welfare system. So I'll also start off by saying Happy New Year to everyone. And for those who are celebrating, it's actually Ukrainian Christmas. So it's an Orthodox Christmas and I am Ukrainian Canadian. And so we have been celebrating for the last couple of days. So I uh, want to wish uh, everyone that as well. And I want to thank Anita for the land acknowledgement. I too am in Toronto. It is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat people. And it's now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. Um, I too also want to start, Anita, for thanking you and all the volunteers for the extraordinary work um, and for putting together this uh, webinar. Uh, thanks to Lisa Marie for her leadership uh, in uh, sponsoring this motion uh, and putting it forward. And to Mike, also for your leadership on this. Um, it takes a village, you guys. It takes a lot of people to get things going. And look, I started an environmental club when I was in high school, and then no one was talking about uh, environment and climate change. And I could tell you, I felt like I was in the wilderness for 20 years before any government really took um, climate change seriously. And now we have, you know, now everybody's taking it seriously. Um, perhaps not the conservatives, but everyone else is taking it very seriously. So what uh, my message to you is do not give up. I think it's just a matter of time um, and uh, that we will have uh, some sort of uh, citizens assembly. And I'm hoping that the time has come. And I agree with Lisa and with Mike, that I think there's a very, very good chance that we will be able to get this through the House uh, this session. Here's a few reasons why I very much uh, support. Oh, and I just want to say a huge um, hello to, I saw Sh Sheila Regeer come in and Lynn Adamson, and I saw, saw a whole slew of uh, Downport residents come on board. So I just want to say thank you so much for uh, joining, uh, particularly on the Sunday. Uh, and um, it's just nice to uh, see everybody's names and uh, get a chance to uh, get back into the saddle after a really lovely holiday break. Um, look, I support um, um, M86 for a number of reasons. I think that after over 150 plus years, it's really good for us to be reviewing our political system to see whether the system we have right now suits us. And I think most people think that it's really due for a massive review right now. Um, when um, our uh, federal government had promised uh, well, when the Liberal Party had promised in 2015 uh, that um, it was going to be the last first past the post election, I had um, hosted maybe seven or eight sessions in Davenport around um, uh, you know, uh, what type of political system we might want to be looking to. And I'll tell you, one of the things I've learned is that there's some people who have very little information about uh, the different types of political system that might exist. And there's others that were very, very well informed. And so it's, that's another reason why I very much am supportive of a Citizens Assembly. To me, it is vital uh, that we are educating Canadians as a Citizens Assembly is, is underway across our country. Um, and I also uh, believe that all political systems, uh, you only have to look at the Netherlands, Israel, many other places around the world, there's pluses and minuses to every political system. Um, so it's important for us to understand um, 
uh, the different systems that are uh, at our uh, that are available to us that we might want to explore. And I think the Citizens Assembly is the best possible um, uh, forum uh, and and uh, uh, format to be able to do this. Um, and I was watching some of the remarks, and I know that someone was um, uh, commenting on Biden's comment about this is a fight for our democracy in terms of the vote in America. And indeed, it just made me think that there is very much a fight in terms of how do we ensure that we continue to strengthen our democracy, not only here in Canada, but around the world. And I think that a citizens assembly is a vital part of us continuing to strengthen our democracy. We want to make sure we have a political system where every single person feels that they don't have to strategically vote um, or that they're voting against something as opposed to for something. Um, and so, and, and we should all, always have a principle where no Canadian feels that they are wasting uh, their vote. Um, so for all of those reasons, to me, a citizen's assembly is, is uh, absolutely critical. Um, I'm very cerebral, so I was actually going to mention a bunch of things in terms of if we were going to move forward on a citizens assembly, some of the thoughts I had on that, but you know what, I think I'm just going to end off by focusing um, on how do we sort of move forward, and I'm really delighted that Anita had put forward, and I think Fair Vote, the Fair Vote team um, has put together a really great proposal in terms of uh, phoning uh, many of the um, uh, MPs who are uh, indecisive. I will tell you, and I say this very genuinely, our, um, for the Liberal Party, uh, and so we are the governing party, for our team, uh, private members' bills or private members' motions are free votes. We all have, we can vote whatever way we would like, even if it is um, not uh, the way the government uh, would prefer uh, us to vote. So I just wanna let you know, uh, liberals, uh, all there's a really wonderful array of liberals that are very supportive. And I'm very pleased to have seen not only the list of names that were supporting Lisa Marie, but also the list that had supported, supported Mike, and I wouldn't mind knowing from Anita who were the two people that voted seven years ago. I wonder if they're still there, but I think that we probably have more than 30 uh, Liberals that are actually supporting this. So I do think it's a wonderful um, uh, campaign. I do think it has a huge chance of being very, uh, um, uh, of being very successful. And um, I just wanna say, um, end off by saying thank you again uh, for this opportunity to be part of this great panel. Thank you, Fair Voice, for your amazing leadership, Lisa Marie, and to Mike, and to everyone who's been fighting on this. We are standing all on your shoulders. Um, and I just believe it's a matter of time uh, before we have a, citizens, a National Citizens Assembly in Canada. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Julie. Very inspiring words from all of you that we could possibly win this motion, which would be so exciting. So I just wanted to reinforce also the nonpartisan. Uh, I did actually hear from Ben Lobb for those following, you know, he seconded, he did email me personally to say, sorry, I can't make it, you know, but have a good webinar. So there is some uh, support among uh, in the Conservative caucus for this. So please don't you know, if you don't know your MP's position, don't write them off, I would say. And I also just wanted to reinforce what Julie was saying, that this proposal for a Citizens Assembly will consider all options. We are interested in evidence, and it's not pushing one particular option. We have nothing to worry about in terms of uh, what the evidence will show we trust citizens. So I'm going to just start with, uh, the, I'm getting basically the same question over and over, and I want to ask it while Julie's still here because, and it's not to put you on the spot, Julie, but this is basically what everybody wants to know in the questions, is what can we do so that the liberal, more liberals will vote for this? I'm getting a variety of ways of asking the same thing. What are the most frequently expressed objections and how do we counter it? Uh, why aren't all liberals just, just voting for this? It's what can we do to convince more liberal MPs? What can people do? Uh, so, I mean, this is my personal opinion, so uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Look, when you think of uh, a citizens assembly, you don't automatically um, think that, oh, well, maybe it might not be like at a time where people are having an affordability crisis, our seniors are really struggling. There's huge amounts of uh, mental health supports that's needed in our society. We have a huge housing crisis and we have a huge climate crisis. So often when people are thinking about those priorities, they're not really 
They're, they don't equate citizens assembly, in my opinion, with strengthening our democracy. And if we don't have a strong democracy, we're not gonna be able to have a strong plan to tackle climate change. We're not going to be able to continue to have our national childcare plan and our national dental care plan. You know, we're not going to have governments that are gonna to want to tackle um, inequality uh, in our society. We're not gonna have the governments that are truly gonna be representing our voice. So I think that in some cases might be missed. It's not the obvious thing. It's not only just to MPs, by the way, it's to citizens. Like a lot of Canadians are just, don't talk to me about this stuff because, you know, they don't have time. They're too busy working. They're working too many jobs. They're putting, you know, food on the table. They're trying to figure out how to pay their rent. And so sometimes they just don't have the time to, um, to, to give, uh, to sort of, you know, think about why it is so important for them to really care about this issue and really make it a priority for this moment in time. And so that would be my, my bad of why some people might sort of say, oh, I'm not so sure I want to be meeting with this group. And so I think it's just important for us to be articulating the extraordinary importance of strengthening our democracy. And absolutely, the time is now for us to be doing this. Uh, Lisa Marie or Mike, do you want to jump in and answer that from your perspective? I see Lisa Marie's hand going up right away. Sure. I'm actually not 100%. I'm not remembering the question specifically. I wanted to add a point on there it was just around um, one thing that I've found has really resonated in my day to day discussions is connecting the why it's important. Um, you know, I, I agree. It, there is a it, it's challenging for people to um, see how the system surrounding um, can impact the effective uh, passing of legislation. And so just bring it really bringing it back to what we're seeing, you know, the d increase in divisive politics, the lack of representation, the delays in important legislation being put forward, uh, and, and, and how the system actually arguably encourages um, those behaviors and, um, uh, you know, the way that parties and politicians work together. And so, you know, right now, in, in, in my perspective, this is the most important piece of legislation that we can get forward because the fact that we're never going to see the um, legislation being put forward in the timely manner that we need. We're never going to see politicians working together in the collaborative manner, looking long term and not just to the next election cycle in the system that we're in. It's time for change. And this is a way for us to be able to do it. And once this is implemented, instead of us continuing to just, you know, run up against wall after wall, we need to change the system so that we can see legislation going through to actually address the climate crisis, to actually address the housing. Now, don't get me wrong, all the other issues are vitally important and we'll continue pushing on those at the same time. But we do need to take a moment and really question, is our current democracy in its strongest form to be able to move forward on the legislation required today? And I, I, my answer would be no. So let's improve it by by taking the, the Citizens Assembly is an opportunity for people to be involved, citizens in our community, to be involved in a nonpartisan, uh, independent manner to be able to move forward um, with recommendations to the government on how do we strengthen that democracy. Because quite frankly, people have lost trust in politicians to do the right thing. So this National Citizens Assembly is an opportunity for Canadians to have the tools to be able to ensure that the government receives the information that they need on how to best move forward. I'll stop there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mike, do you want to I jump did, in? Yeah, just two brief reflections. One, we all need to do a better job of making the connection between what we all care about, whether it's the climate crisis, the housing crisis, or friends of ours dying from poison drugs, and the reality that our parliament would make better decisions if we had electoral ref, uh, reform and decisions that would more closely align with the interests of Canadians across the country. The second, and I think it's David Suzuki who made the point in the comments already, is we need more political pressure. Ultimately, this is what it comes down to, is your MP needs to feel the pressure that their constituents want to see them act on this. And so Fair Vote Canada is mobilizing people across the country to apply that pressure. But I think we should all be considering what additional tactics we can take to increase that pressure, because this vote's coming along once. On February 7th or thereabouts, MPs will vote. After that point, there won't be another opportunity. So we have this moment 
we need to use make the most of it. To David's point in the comments, if Margaret Atwood, uh, Ryan uh, Reynolds, if other high profile folks would come out in support, I would expect Fair Vote Canada would welcome that with open arms because ultimately that's going to increase the political pressure that we need for MPs and their parties to pay attention and to support this. Yeah, so no. I want to go ahead. Oh, bye, I Julie. Have, I have to go, you guys, but thank you so much. You guys have been phenomenal. I know there'll be many more conversations moving forward, but thank you guys. Bye. Okay, thanks, Julie. Yeah, I just want to reinforce what. Uh, Lisa Marie and Mike and Julie are all talking about people need to hear from their constituents and they need to hear it now. We have a few weeks left to get the votes that we need. And, you know, in terms of celebrities, yeah, it would be great if we had celebrities. It's not that we haven't asked celebrities. This is a tough issue. It's a process issue. It is really hard to get that kind of thing. But I've been through lots of referendum campaigns with celebrities and I got to tell you, okay, that's nice. MPs care about their constituents, care about those meeting requests, they care about the pictures of you door knocking, they care about the phone calls that are coming into their office, they care about that a lot more than a celebrity endorsement, not that we wouldn't welcome a celebrity endorsement just because it brings more atten positive attention to, uh, to this bill. So I've got a few motions, sorry, motion. I've got a few more questions. People are basically asking, um, I'll, well, what if this motion does pass, you know, how do we won't the party, uh, I'm, I'm just naming the Liberal Party because people are naming the Liberal Party, <laughs> won't the Liberal Party just, uh, you know, do something to make it go away? Yeah, go ahead. I'll, you want to go first, Lisa Marie? Then Mike. Sure, sure. I mean, obviously, I can't speak on behalf of the Liberal Party. We have seen historically what has happened um, with the promise for electoral reform. Now, what gives me optimism is that we did see, as uh, Anita mentioned in her presentation, the Liberal, um, uh, the Liberal Party um, uh, members uh, put forward and pass a motion. Uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the word of it now. My January brain is coming back again, but they, they passed a resolution. There's the word I was looking for um, on this exact topic. The NDP also at their most recent convention yes. passed a resolution on this as well. The Greens have shown that they have have also been in support of um, a resolution for a National Citizens Assembly on electoral reform. The work is being done to have the conversations in the community as to why this is important. And people are talking to their members of parliament about why this is vitally important. So the pressure is on. And ultimately, I do believe that the Liberals need that pressure in order to remind them as to why this is important. And I feel like um, without that, we, we won't see the movement in the right direction. And so just to reaffirm, uh, reaffirm this, this motion will not be legally binding. This will not say that the Liberals have to, without a doubt, move forward with this, but it would be a, a really silly decision to not move forward when it is clear that the majority of Canadians are asking to move in this direction. And now that this pressure has been applied, they're going to, their feet are going to be to the fire and it's going to be harder for them not to follow through with it. And, and just a brief word to add, Parliament is supreme. Parliament is more powerful than any political party. And so while this is a non-binding motion, and in the motion, it's not even proposing a certain path forward, it's simply proposing that a, an assembly is created to make recommendations. But when parliament supports a motion, even a non-binding motion, that creates significant political pressure. The last time that parliament supported a motion that the governing party did not support, was asking David Johnston to step down a special rapporteur on foreign interference. And that action was taken within weeks of parliament passing that motion. So one of many examples of the political pressure that's created when parliament passes a motion, irrespective of where the governing party stands on that, on that motion. Okay. Um, so I'm, I know some of these questions are repetitive, but they're good questions. It's just, can we spend a bit of time looking at strategies that we, the public, can do to encourage more MPs to get on board with a citizen's assembly? 
strategies. So we are doing, um, and I want to just reinforce, sorry to take up a little bit of air time again on this, MP visits, by far the most effective way to get your MP on board is to visit your MP. So I feel like I've asked people to visit their MP so many times, there's like my motive breath for it. But if there's anybody on this call that has a liberal or conservative MP and is willing to set up a meeting with them in the next three weeks to talk about this motion, we will support you. We will help you find company to go. We will provide you materials. We will do everything we can to help make that visit a success. Uh, we just had a visit. We've had two visits this week where MPs who probably would have voted no 100% for sure, you know, we're able, we were able to, volunteers, constituents were able to move them to, I'll think about it. And that's, I'll consider it. I'll talk to my colleagues. I'll talk to some of the other MPs that are supporting it and find out why they're supporting it. If they don't have those conversations with constituents, then that domino effect doesn't start. And that's what we're trying to do is create that domino uh, effect. So you can do that. You can do petitions, you can do phone banking. I'd really encourage everybody to sign up for the phone banking. You'll be redirected to the sign up page as soon as you leave this webinar. If you can give a couple of hours, that's probably the biggest way you can help at this point. Um, Lisa Marie and Mike. Sure, thank you. And, and I apologize. I'm happy for Mike to go first at some point too. I'm hogging the first uh, response. Uh, Sorry, please. I bought a, a <laughs> yeah. mental thing where no, I asked no, Lisa Marie great. first. Yeah, um, thank you. I agree with everything that was just said. Also, um, just to reiterate, um, as uh, Anita showed, if you go on to my um, motion itself through our commons.ca, you can see all of the members of parliament that have um, seconded the motion, but also Anita has done a good job of making available, I believe through the fair vote site, um, the additional members of parliament that have supported this work. Um, because unfortunately, you can only have up to a maximum of 20 seconders. So although those are the ones who got their names put in first, there are other members of parliament who aren't listed as official seconders um, who are 100% in support of this motion. Um, and also um, you can follow, uh, so we already had the first hour of debate. And so you can actually um, see historically, you can go and watch the, the votes. There's a lot of information available online that shows you how people are, how the members Members of Parliament are voting, um, when they've spoken on the issues, um, you know, all that information is available, um, a lot of it through our commons.ca. Uh, so, so just a heads up that uh, a great way to be able to get that information to know uh, prior to speaking to your MP where what they've said in the past and to, to hold them to account for that promise. The other thing is just because, um, so um, Julie had spoken about the free vote. Now, just to be clear, uh, a lot of times that'll happen with a free vote, but there is strategy behind it. If the Liberal Party does not want to see this pass, I can assure you there will not be enough members of Parliament in the Liberal Party voting in favour of this. It may be close, but there won't be. So we need to keep that pressure on um, because the party needs to feel the pressure from the MPs as well and from the constituents. Um, my hope is that the Liberal Party will see this as an opportunity to show cross-partisan work to show ways to strengthen our democracy and to follow through with their promise. There's a reason why they were promising this. So to see that follow through um, moving forward. And, and so each individual member of parliament will be voting um, on this motion coming up on, I believe, February 5th, although things do change sometimes. But February 5th, you'll be able to see every member of parliament's record, whether that be in the House or virtual, um, you'll be able to see how they voted. Mike? Yeah, we need to win about 100 votes from the two main parties, right? Uh, we have the Bloc, the NDP, and the Greens, who, whose full caucuses will be supporting. That's about 60-ish votes. Uh, we need about 170 votes to win this. And so with the 10 or so Liberals who already joint seconded the motion, we're going to need about 100 more. Uh, we don't have a precedent for that yet in this session of Parliament, it's a huge number of MPs to, to flip, and it's possible through the pressure that we have been exerting and will continue to exert, up to and including switching the position of the party to align with their own grassroots members. Um, and so I would encourage you to sign up for a phone bank after this conversation, 
If you've not met with your MP already, please do so. If your MP is supportive, don't stop there though. Be speaking with your friends who might live in a neighboring riding to encourage them to have a conversation with their MP to do the same. That organizing over the next 30 days will be the make or break on whether we win this vote. And if we win this vote, you can only imagine the media attention. I think the most number we've seen of MPs voting against their party on, on private member bills, I think is like 20 or so. Um, this will be significant should we be able to put the political pressure required to win it. Right. I wanted to just make a quick comment before we end about the government changing its mind. So, you know, the door has been slammed, locked and bolted since February 2nd, 2017 on this because of Justin Trudeau's opinion on this whole thing. It's not impossible. It's a long shot, but it's not impossible that the government could change their mind. This is a non-binding motion. This is for a citizens assembly. Uh, it's not committing the government to any reform before the next election. It's just a process. It would include uh, looking at all systems, including the preferred system of the prime minister. So if they are hearing from Again, coming back to everyone on this call, if they are hearing from enough backbench MPs, if they are hearing from ministers, the cabinet ministers, if the cabinet ministers are getting a lot of calls in their writings, particularly if it's a swing writing, if anybody's following the polls, and I'm sure if you're on a Fair Vote Canada webinar, you are probably following the polls and knowing uh, what the polls look like right now, including in a lot of writings for liberal cabinet ministers. So there are some ministers where we are focusing on those writings and making sure that they hear from constituents that uh, people want this motion to pass. Okay, it's not enough just for some backbencher to say, well, I voted for it or whatever, but it failed, right? We want to, we want that message at the cabinet table. We want uh, liberal MPs talking to each other and, uh, you know, to create that momentum for this to pass. Um, and again, just reinforcing what Mike and Lisa Marie have said, uh, a lot of you that are in, say, NDP or Green Riding haven't heard from Fairville Canada on this hardly at all because we have not been targeting your riding. Now is the time for you to get involved and help. We need you on the phone bank. You'll be calling into ridings where we need help. We need constituent help. So now is the time when you can help us with this make or break last few weeks for M86. So I think that it's almost two o'clock. That's a wrap. I'm sorry we couldn't get to everybody's question. Please feel free to email me um, if you have additional questions. And if it's for the MPs, I will try to direct that uh, appropriately. So I wanted to take uh, time to thank everyone for showing up. We had a great turnout today. Thanks to Lisa Marie Barron for putting this for motion forward. Thanks to Mike Morris and Julie Zerkowicz for supporting this motion. and. Uh, I hope everybody will sign up to help us with phone banking. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>